Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Let me ask you a question and let me know in the comments. What would you do if you were unable to access any social media? No Twitter, no Instagram, no Facebook. How would you feel about that? Do you think you're addicted? Or do you think that's just some overhyped uh, psychological nonsense? You let me know in the comments, but this book is about that very subject. And it is a doozy. And we're going to talk about all that right now. All right. So I want to talk today about the book called Ghoster by Jason Arnop. Um, in case you're not familiar with this author... Uh, a few years ago, he wrote a book called The Death of Jack Sparks, I believe it was called. It was one of these quirky, weird horror books with a dark sense of humor running underneath it. And, uh, and I haven't seen anything else by him recently until, uh, until this book. Uh, and I, it's great to see him keeping that same quirky, weird sensation and vibes that he gave in the in the jack sparks book and he has uh uh definitely uh kept that going in this one because basically this is it starts out weird it, well not weird but it starts out differently than you would think about a uh you know a horror story it's basically about a about a woman she meets a boy they get to know one another, they fall in love, and eventually he asks her to move in with him uh, to his apartment in a city that's about 300 miles away from hers. Now, she's a paramedic. She has, uh, she's been doing this for like 15 years, uh, but she quits her job. She gives up her apartment because she's convinced she's in love with him. This is the guy she wants to make all those happy memories with. Uh, but a couple days leading up to her big move, after it's all said and done, she's packed, she's ready to go, her her apartment's done, her job is done, uh, he starts, well, he, he kind of disappears. He won't answer his text messages, he's not answering his phone, nobody can get a hold of him, and that's when she be, she begins wondering at first, like, uh, is he, is he having second thoughts? Is he getting cold feet? Does he not want this to happen? But she knows he's an IT guy, and his job has him traveling a lot, and he's under a lot of pressure. Uh, you know, he also does a lot of freelance work, so he's always gone. So she thinks, you know, it's no big deal. This is, I mean, you know, what, what kind of a cycle would just set up something like that and then just uh, abandon everything. So she's got all her boxes packed. She hires a mover and off she goes to his apartment. But when she gets there, that appears to have happened because the apartment is completely empty and devoid of any presence of another human being. It is completely, and she's been to his apartment before. So she's aware of, you know, his uh, uh, furniture and the way things are kind of arranged there. But it is empty. It is abandoned. And uh, she cannot get a hold of him. Uh, but what's a girl to do? She's just going to stay in that apartment at least for a little while. She's starting her new paramedic job in, in this new town. Uh, but one thing she finds is uh, his old smartphone with a cracked screen and a locked password uh, screen on it so now she has to figure out what kind of secrets does this phone hold and should she really be looking at it because surely she's still thinking there has to be some reasonable explanation for this so this this book kind of starts out like it's a um, some kind of a love story going wrong uh, 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 you know she's been ghosted he's disappeared out of her life it was a cruel very cruel prank and uh, she doesn't know what to do. Luckily, she has a best friend that's there to help her. They've worked together before. But the thing is, she is on a detox, a social media uh, technology kind of detox, because something happened at her job concerning her and her best friend when she was looking through so her social media for certain things when she shouldn't have been and something bad happened on the job and she's convinced herself that she's addicted to this thing that uh, 
She just can't stop looking at her phone. She can't stop checking her social media. Uh, that she's kind of addicted to getting those likes and those retweets and uh, and the accolades that uh, the Denzians of the Nets uh, heap upon her. So she went through a detox. So all she's got is this uh, old school Nokia phone that has SMS messages, really low grade pictures and phone calls and that's it no apps no uh smartphone capabilities uh but this is where the story takes a weird wonderful uh horrifying twist because something is in that apartment with her she decides to stay in the apartment until she can figure this out and make money to to get her own place if she needs to but strange things start happening ghosts start appearing uh, in the form of like a a blue outline. Uh, Scratches at the bottom of the door leaving wood shavings as if something was in there clawing, trying to get out. And she doesn't know what is going on. But we are going to find all that out. There are some people who are authors, writers, And then some also have that extra ability to just be great storytellers. And I think this author is one of those. He's a very good storyteller. Everything he says about her feelings, because we we are uh, reading this from her first person, person perspective. And everything she says about the social media and how it had basically... Uh, she was basically addicted to all those things that social media can bring. Uh, it's going to ring true, I think, for most people. There are things in there when I thought, well, I kind of do that sometimes. Does that mean I'm addicted? <laughs> but the book never gets preachy about the evils of social media. You know what I mean? This is just her experience with it. And he writes it in such a way that it is very familiar. It's going to be very familiar to everybody. So he grounds his book in that reality but it goes eventually it's going in this completely out of left field weird direction that you won't see coming that i didn't see coming it's not necessarily a twist or a big revelation it's just the way the story progresses from where you think it was going to at the beginning it's a very eclectic weird book and i absolutely loved it just like I loved uh, uh, Jack Sparks. I think those are the only two novels he's written, if I'm not mistaken. I might be wrong, but uh, both of them they just have a way of, uh, uh, there's so much, re- it's so grounded in reality, you can't help but feel that uh, it's one thing, and then it just takes off in a different direction, and things are going to be revealed, secrets are going to come up, and we're going to find out what happened to this guy. Did he actually ghost her? Was this just some kind of cruel, uh, horrible prank on this woman, trying to trying to drive her insane, trying to ruin her life? Or is there something more going on that we don't know about? You're going to feel different ways about uh, what you're thinking as you're reading this book, but it will be revealed in the end. And man, it's a banger. I absolutely love this book. Ghoster. Definitely pick it up. And I will leave a link down below to Amazon if you want to purchase it. Give it a try. It's going to be different from anything else you read and uh, still got that darkly humorous vibe underneath it all. And uh, it's going to take you to places you don't expect when you first start reading it. And also down below, be sure to check out all my links. I got links to my books, uh, links to my uh, newsletter, my social media is down there. I'd love for you to check all those out. And as always, I want to say thank you for taking some of your time, spending it here with me. I really appreciate you guys watching. And until we meet again, keep reading spooky, my friends.